This is going to be my second look at the DxO Pure Raw 3 software, a noise reduction software. So let's launch the program and we're presented with our DxO Pure Raw splash screen. Then we're given another splash screen which tells me that you'll prime your images with a neutral AI technology. So let's close that. And now we can add some raw files to process. So we click on there and we'll navigate to a folder where we've got some raw files. Now I'm going to bring in a whole lot of raw files on this, but I'm not going to use them all. So let's add all the photographs. Um, as you can see, we've got lots on here. Now I've shot all these photographs for the purpose of actually doing this and DxO Pure Raw review. Now all these images have been shot at an extremely high ISO, 25,600, and they've been shot on a Panasonic GX9 with a 14 millimeter lens, which equates to a 28 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. Now high ISO and micro four third cameras don't necessarily go well together, but I'm gonna show you just how well and this DxO Pure Raw can cope with these. So let's unselect all the photographs. I don't want to process them all. They're all highlighted at the moment, which means they're all going to get processed. So I'm going to unselect all, and we're just going to select a few images. So I'm going to select this bookcase here, um, where we can see the details of the books. I'm going to use that for JPEG rendering. And I'm also going to select this one here, the card game room, the clock, and also one more. And here where we've got a purposely under underexposed picture. And I just want to see how much detail we can extract from an underexposed region using Pure Raw 3. Now I've got my four files selected. I can either process them all four together or individually. So I'm actually going to process this individually. So we'll click on the unselect all. Um, I'm going to start off with the clock picture here um, just to show you how much noise can be removed from an image. So we click on the process now button and we are presented with the processing screen here and we can choose from high quality prime, deep prime or deep prime XD which stands for extra detail. Now I would recommend going for the XD version and this will give you the best results. The lens softness um, this is a form of sharpening. I found in my experimenting that the standard version is the best one to use. Output format, I'm going to choose DNG for this. It produces large files, but they are very, very good, as are both for JPEG and TIFF, in all fairness. My destination, I'm going to choose the DX folder in the original images folder. So this will now create a DX folder where your rendered files will be placed in, and they'll be placed in as a subfolder of your original folder. The file renaming, this is quite interesting, it took me a while to work this one out. We can have a prefix, um, so I can actually put a custom text of DNG. So if we look at the bottom here, we see DNG followed by your file name. Or we can have the raw processing method, so that would be D DXC, D prime, um, DNG, image name. A little bit long-winded that one, so I'm going to take that one off. Or we can have a suffix that would means that this will go at the end of your file name. So we can select that to file name followed by DxO Deep Prime XD. Or we can just have a custom text that's a file name followed by DNG. And that's the one I'm going to select for this. And now we can export either to Lightroom Classic or Photoshop or Photolab. Or we can add another image applications such as Affinity, but I'm going to just do an export after processing. So now we start the processing, click on there, and as the processing starts, we'll see a render line going across the bottom here, and also the render line is going on the actual image itself. Once processing done, you can view the results here. So we click on view the results, and we'll go into one-to-one -one view on this so we can see it clearly. And as you can see on the left-hand side, we have the raw file, which has got all the noise on it from a 25,600 ISO image. And if we take our split view screen, we can see the resulting 
corrections that have been made by DxO Pure Raw 3. Now before we move on and view some of the resulting images, I'll just point out another couple of features. When you bring in a batch of images, the, the application will actually sort these out into ISO values. So we've got all values above 1600 ISO, or we've got other images between 400 and 600 ISO, 1600 ISO, sorry. And also we've got files that are below and up to 400 ISO. There's not going to be much noise on the files that are below 400 ISO. So we need to process these so we can deselect these files here. And we can, batch, we can batch process the entire collection if we want to. But I'm going to show you another way of doing this as well. Now, as I stated before, we can process the entire collection in one go, but obviously that's going to take quite a while. And maybe we don't particularly want to process every single file. So let's select the files we do want to process and show you how to add them to a queue. So let's start by unselecting all the images. Click on the unselect all button at the top here. And we're just going to select the images we want to process. So I'm going to process the clock one, the games room, the bookcase, and the underexposed picture. And also I'm going to add this one here just to show you how the distortions are corrected as well. Now we can add all these photographs to the a queue. So click on add to queue. And we can select all the permutations we want. So we can have deep prime, standard, we're going to put them as JPEG at 100% and put them into a DXO folder, which is placed in the original images folder. File renaming, we're going to put a custom text of JPEG behind each of the files. So we're going to add these now to a queue. Now we can see that they're added to a queue by a little time or a little clock in each corner of there. So now we can show the queue, which click on the bottom button here, the bottom left hand corner. And here we can see the files that are in the queue. Now, if we want to actually reorder the files, we don't particularly want um, this one to be processed first. I actually want this one to be processed first. Just drag it up there and we can change the order of processing. Maybe a client wants his photographs first. I'm not sure why, but that option is there. So you can actually reorder and you can also reorder whilst the processing is in progress. So to start the processing, the temptation might be to press the process now button, which is not actually the way to do it. The way to do it is actually to press this small unobtrusive play button here, which is continue processing. And um, so we'll click on that button there. And it's going to take a little while to process the entire collection here. So possibly about two minutes or so. And um, once a, we can see now the rendering is started. Now I'm going to cut from this section here right to the end of the processing. Well, now it's taken approximately two minutes to get to this stage where we're nearing the completion of all five images that have been processed as JPEGs. Now we can view the results. And before we do that, we can see that each of the images that have been processed got a small tick in the corner. And this indicates that those images have already been processed. So now we can view the results. And here we have the, the before and after shots. Now if we go back to the other image there, which I selected as well, and that's this one here. And the reason I'm putting this one on, it's going to show you how DxO actually corrects for optical distortions of a lens. And here's the original file. And we can see that the wide angle lens has caused severe barrel distortion. As I said, DxO does have a database of over 77,000 camera and lens combinations. And most lens, modern day lenses and cameras will be accommodated. And you can see how it's corrected. Not only is it removed the noise, but it's also corrected all the distortions on there. Of course, you need to batch process the images, all your images with the same formula. So we want to process, let's unselect this one. We want to process this image here as a DNG file. We'll add that one to the queue. And we can select the permutations we want for this file. And we'll have this one as a DNG file. 
and we'll, we won't put a prefix after this one. We'll just DXO deep prime processed file. So we add that one to the queue and this one here, we deselect that we'll add this to the queue as well. And maybe we'll put this one as a TIFF file. Add to queue and one more. Let's put this study picture here and then we we'll deselect that one and we'll add this one to the queue as well. And this time I want it processed as both a DNG and a JPEG file. And so we'll select that there and that's we'll add that to the queue. And now when we show the image queue, we'll see that our three images have been placed in there, each one of them with a different process. That one's a DNG, that one's going to be a TIFF, that's going to be a JPEG and a DNG. So we we'll click on the process button down below here and it'll process those ones in the same way we've just done. So now let's look at some of the results. And the first one is where we're going to be looking at how Pure Raw 3 sharpens up the images and we've got the four different permutations from soft, standard, strong and hard and I've also included off on this. So let's zoom in on the images to 100%. We'll scroll the images around. Here's the off. We've got quite nice detail on there and if we go through um, to the soft one to the standard which is quite good um, right through to the hard. I felt the hard one is possibly a little bit too harsh on there. It's a bit over sharpened on there. So my recommendation is to really go with this, the the um, standard version there and we just select a little bit more of the books so you can see on there and you can see predominantly on the gold leaf on the books here how much over sharpened it is when you choose the hard section. So the standard does a pretty good job for this and also you can see the books on there. We've got a little bit more of an edge on there. If you really want something over sharp then go for the hard. But my advice is actually go for the standard or even the off and actually use your image application there to control the amount of sharpness you apply to your pictures. And here we can see the difference between the soft on the left here and the hard processing of the JPEG file. And we can see in the hard it's actually left too much of an edge on there. The soft one has got a more rounded feel to it. We can see that on the cushion here where we've got slight haloing around parts of the edges around here. We can especially down the bottom part there and we can see it's nice and soft there. So my recommendation still stands. Go for either the soft off or and use your image editing application to apply an unsharp mask to control the amount of sharpness you apply to your images. Now the thing that did surprise me was actually the JPEG compression. I would recommend that you set your JPEG compression to 100% so that means that there's very minimal amount of compression. But I did experiment and we tried at 25% compression, 50% compression and I've got a DNG file to compare while. Well at the 25% we can see banding coming in on this so there's no smoothness of tone here. Detail's been fairly well maintained although if we've magnified this to 200% we can start seeing detail break up. At 50% it's produced a, a reasonably good image but obviously not as good as a non-compressed image i.e. the DNG file. I wanted to see how much detail could be extracted from a, a vastly underexposed image. As I said before this is still shot at 25,600 ISO. So here we are looking at this in Capture One software. This has already had some noise reduction applied to the image automatically when it opens. So I'm going to take all this off here and we'll see what exactly the image looks like without any noise removal on there whatsoever. So we now magnify this to say 50% and have a look. And we can see it's pretty noisy, not a lot of detail on there. So we go into the shadow areas and we try and lift out the shadows and we can see it's just one mess there. So now let's compare this with the DNG file which has been rendered with Pure Raw 3. And I'm going to apply the same amount of shadow detail on there and 
let's bring that up. It's not brilliant, but it has recovered quite a bit of shadow areas on there. And if we look at the other version here, we can see there's a lot of noise on there. I can reduce that noise again and put that back to the default settings as it would have opened. It's a lot of noise on there. There hasn't been a lot of shadow recovery on there. Compare this back with the process file and we've got a quite smoothness coming in. I wouldn't advise you to underexpose your images expecting to, to get the best detail out of them whatsoever. We can recover to a certain extent. For this next image, I just want to show you how much detail can be obtained from the various files from DNG to JPEG to TIFFs. This is rather surprising for me as well. So here we have the original file, the raw file, which has been unprocessed. I'm going to put this 100% and I'm just going to shift around and I'm going to look at this lamp here. And we can see there's quite a lot of burnout here. Now raw file actually does hold a lot more detail than a JPEG file. So we can bring back some of the detail in the highlights. And there we've got the lampshade, which has got nice detail on there altogether. Um, as we can see on the the noise is still there on this particular raw file. If we now look at the DNG file, we've taken the noise away and I'm going to increase the highlights again. So now we can see we've got detail back in there, nice detail on the on the base of the lamp. And now if we look at a TIFF file, now this is 16-bit TIFF file, which I'm quite surprised at. Now I always assumed that 16-bit would hold just as much information as a raw file. Not so. So if I now try and bring the highlights back in, it just grays out. There's no detail gained on there. And if the same happens on the JPEG file as well, if we bring that in, we've got no detail. So if we look at it, the TIFF file here, it's lacking in detail. If we look at the, the DNG file, and we'll put that 100%, the DNG file there, compared to the TIFF file, the TIFF is dulled down. Even the chairs have actually become duller. And we can see there's quite a difference in the, in the DNG file and the TIFF file. So I'm not terribly impressed with the TIFF file rendering on this. Finally, I'll tell you exactly what file sizes these are. The original raw file straight from the camera was a 23.1 megabyte file. The JPEG file is a 22.4 megabyte file. The DNG file is 74.7 .7 megabytes. And the TIFF file is a massive 115 0.4 megabyte file. So this is very large. Didn't actually produce the best results either. Hopefully in this review, I've demonstrated the full capabilities of DxO Pure Raw 3, where we start off with a raw file at a shot at very high ISO, and DxO Pure Raw 3 has managed to remove all the noise and also corrected the optical distortions. Pure Raw as three as a standalone package is £115, or as an upgrade, it's roughly £70. But I should also mention that Photolab 6, the Elite Edition, um, also includes the Deep Prime XD, which is the ultimate noise removal tool offered by DxO. And that can be obtained for £199, or as an upgrade for £89. I'm sure you'll agree with me that this represents excellent value for money and will salvage a lot of files shot at a very high SO.